Okay, so in this video I wanted to extend us a little bit further uh, from the, the previous one where we learned how to use the Raspberry Pi with the Visual Studio and, and uh, tra transfer a program over to the Raspberry Pi and begin to deb debug. Um, now what I want to do is go ahead and extend that so we can test our GPIO pins. And uh, I'm, again, I'm not creating this material. Uh, you know, from from scratch, uh, I'm I'm leveraging this Adafruit uh, tutorial that's out here and just doing a video against it. So what you're going to need to complete this is a, a 180 ohm resistor, an LED, and a couple of jumpers. Uh, and uh, the basic connections are are listed here at the bottom, and uh, we'll go through those. So that's pretty much what we're going to do. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, actually cancel here. Alright, so what I want to do is, um, is I want to set up our project. So opening Visual Studio and go to New Project and then we want to go down to uh, uh, Windows and then to our Windows IT Core, IoT Core rather, and then uh, Background Application. And this application we want to create uh, does not have a front end to it, it's headless. So what we simply want to do is go ahead and give it a name. So we'll just name it Blinky Headless, just as the tutorial tells us to. Go ahead and create a repository. And that name already exists because I had just done that a pre uh, in the previous song. Let me get two. There we go. And that gets us to this screen here where we um, select our target version for the UW, uh, UW application. Uh, platform UWP and uh, in the previous video I had showed how you check uh, on your Raspberry Pi the uh, OS installation and make sure that these numbers right here match up to what you're using here and they do so we're good to go so we can go ahead and close that down go ahead and hit OK and uh, let this uh, shell out our project alright so uh, now this tutorial that's out on Adafruit uh, is is really good, and uh, if you're if you're confused in any manner about how this all works, I would definitely suggest that you go out here and take a look. Specifically, a good part of the read is this uh, timer thread, and basically, uh, you know, if you were doing just regular programming on a, a computer, you'd use a delay uh, in your in your code because you'd have a front end to it, and it'd sit there and and run. But uh, it works a little bit differently in a headless application, and if the application were to exit, then you're, you know, you'd have no timer events, uh, it would just stop. So uh, this uh, task deferral is your way to, to work around that. Now, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail, you can come out here and read it, but uh, it's a very good, uh, good piece in the inside of the uh, tutorial here. Um, this talks a little bit about the I.O. pins and how we're getting them working, uh, you know, with the code that's running, all that kind of thing. And again, I'm not spending a lot of time on walking you through the tutorial. It's here for your reference. It'll be in the notes. Uh, but what I wanted to do was go ahead and uh, set this up and then, you know, show it to you so that you could have somebody uh, having displayed it working and you know that it does work and, and how, how it was actually set up. So. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the the physical side of this. All right, and so what I've got here is uh, is my uh, breadboard and all coming off of my Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna go ahead and move this camera down a little bit. Zoom this in a little bit. Hopefully that'll make it where it's a little easier to see, and we'll talk through what I have. So first of all, let's take a look at the resistor. Uh, one of the, la the leads of the resistor is going into the same pin of the short leg of my LED. The other leg of that LED right here aligns with this, uh, this red wire. Okay, and you'll notice that we're not we're not out on the edge here on the red wire, and that's going to go over to pin five of our board. Okay, now you can see the other edge of this resistor, the other lead of this resistor is going to the negative. Okay, so we got the negative running into the resistor, it comes into the short leg of our LED. 
the other, the longer leg of the LED runs to our red wire, which is running back to pin 5 for power. Okay, so very simple. And I know that the LED looks like it has a, a little bit of light to it. Really, that's just the shining off the lights that I have um, trying to illuminate the, the project here. All right, so there we go. That's the, the basic wiring setup. And then, you know, the, the other end of that, that uh, cable there uh, the, is simply plugged into our Raspberry Pi. So just lined with the pins. Red side of your wiring goes to the outside of your, your case here. And so you're lined up. All right. Let's go ahead and close that down. I'm going to go ahead and out here off the Adafruit um, website. I'm going to grab this this code and what we're going to do is we're simply going to bring it in here and we're going to paste it in right here in our uh, our project now actually let's do it this way i'll paste it at the bottom all right so the first thing we see is things start to go red on us and then we're expecting that that's okay uh, these are all the um, basically the imports of all the uh, references that we would use on the project and so I'm going to go ahead and copy those up and put them right here Oops, right over top of the ones that were there all right so that gets gets those taken care of all right now the other thing that uh, we have here is the namespace naming you'll notice that uh, you know I was pretty consistent in the naming so I don't need to duplicate any of this and we can see where it comes down here and we get uh, the actual code starting where the deferral task starts to take place and it goes on down to the end down here so let's go ahead and grab that All right. and we're going to take and paste it right up in here just like so take and delete all this extra extraneous uh, stuff that's left over. All right, so there's our code. And the first thing we notice is we got some things that went red. Well, there's a reason for that. When we did this, and when I got started in this, I dove right into the code. I didn't take the moment at the beginning to actually set up the uh, references. So if we go over to the Solutions Explorer, Go down here to references, right, right click on references and do an add. We can go down here to our Universal Windows extensions and find the appropriate extension for our version of the UDP, UWP rather. So um, there we go. And let's go ahead and hit OK. Again, that version number matches up with what I had on the device. Okay, so I've, I have added in the, um, the reference, but I also noticed that I uh, failed to delete some of this extraneous code. So let me go ahead and delete this. And there we go. So that looks a little better. Looks like we've cleared everything up at this moment. And so we go ahead and build our application. So succeeded that's good all right so what we want to do next is we want to come here and uh, make sure that we're set on debug and ARM and we want to come down and do remote machines click that now here you can put in your host name for your Raspberry Pi or in my case I'm going to put in the IP address so 192.168.1.204 and select Now let's go ahead and have it uh, complete the build uh, and push it to the Raspberry Pi. So this could take a little while. I'll go ahead and pause the video while this is, uh, is going on and then uh, I'll come back and show you the results. Okay, so we're getting closer. 
it's uh, done most of its layout and have this message up that says, uh, you know, it's taking longer than expected. Do you want to terminate? Uh, you never terminate. Let that run its full course. And uh, we should see this thing pop out here in just a second. So, all right. So, remember, we're headless. And, uh, so I went ahead and displayed the, the Raspberry Pi uh, GUI interface so that uh, you can see that there's nothing going on on the GUI. But if I flip over to my camera here, we can see that that light is uh, lighting just uh, as expected and uh, you know that the code is, is truly running. Now again, one of the things that is great about the uh, doing this from Visual Studio is that we have the ability to debug and so if we were to go in and uh, throw a couple of uh, oh let's throw a breakpoint in here somewhere okay so the first thing we notice is that uh, it hit the hit the breakpoint and it stopped we, uh, the, you know we, our LED is no longer lit the codes not running at the device over here and we can actually step through this code. So if I was to hit, uh, I think it's F11, no, F8. Nope, F11, I had it right the first time. All right, so we can continue to step down through here, down through our code. Or we can come over here and hit F5 and let it run, okay? and our light has lit as I continue to step through it's continuing to pulse doing it, it, it's, its thing in the code. This is a very simple example but it does show you that you can get to the debug functions and you can get to your code and you can hold things at certain points so that you can check your variables and, and check uh, what's going on with your code which is uh, you know critical to being able to uh, to find out what is truly going on and then also to, to fix those things and to have your code run proficiently the way you want it to. So that'll do it for this video. In the next one I'll probably look a little bit deeper. I think I want to look at uh, maybe getting a, an L, uh, LCD screen attached to the Raspberry Pi and, and getting some messages showing that way. So maybe we'll take a, a stab at that next.